Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Paint Party Livestream. I'm so glad to have you again here with me in my studio. I hope you had a great week and that um, the new week is off to a great start. We have had some wonderful weather and then yesterday the temperatures crashed and we got a snowstorm in hopefully the last one of the spring winter but uh, we are definitely in transition. We think we got about four to five, maybe six inches of snow, but it's already melting quickly, even almost before it ended. So that's good to know that spring is on its way. But anyway, glad to have you here again for this, the 132nd episode of the live stream. If you've been here before, you know how this works. It is kind of like an open house. You just pop in, pop out, stay as long as you'd like. You can participate in the live stream with me um, through the comments wherever you're watching. So I enjoy interacting with you. You can ask questions, you can make comments, uh, suggestions. I enjoy interacting with you while I paint. Um, this is my learn to paint journey a couple of years ago. Now about three years ago, I started teaching myself to paint um, using YouTube tutorials primarily and then um, I'm working with acrylic paint and at the beginning of this year I started transitioning to oil paint so the last couple of months have been really kind of crazy um, starting over in to a certain extent and learning more and more every day I've been really trying to dedicate myself again to my painting practice and really make it a disciplined practice so the the first few months of the year here I've been spending a lot more time in the studio outside of these live streams. I am getting ready to do a collection of paintings of the Black Hills here where I live. And so a lot of these paintings that I've been doing on the live stream are just kind of color studies or sketches of paintings that I may want to do for that. And tonight is no different. So let me get the camera set up. I'll transition um, and, put a, and put a reference photo up on your screen so you can see what we are working with this evening. All right. Here we are, and I will move this camera around so that you can see my, so you can more easily see my, um, canvas panel. All right, let's see. All right, I think we are at a good spot. So let me move you all in as close as you can. I'm going to plug in the, I guess I should pull the my apron off. Get this, plug in the camera. There we go. All right, let me see. We will jump right in. This is what we will be painting. Let me put my palette over here. All right, whoops. This week I got a little shelf unit from my parents that they were getting rid of and was able to organize all my old acrylic paints because I still have a whole bunch of acrylic paints and a bunch of other supplies and it just makes me so happy to have my space organized. That said, makes me want to do more and organize my space even better. All right. Let's 
we will get started. And what I'm going to do, I think, is um, like we usually do, I'll start with kind of a, a drawing and we'll lay in our dark shadow spots. This is a picture of the, um, good grief, this is not coming off. It is a picture from the Homestake Railroad Grade Trail, which is an old railroad grade that was only used for, oh, maybe 20, 30 years between Lead, where I live, and Deadwood, South Dakota, which is just three miles um, down the mountain from us. And so it is... Along that trail are these, a couple of these passes where the railroad went between a couple of um, rock walls basically, and it creates these kind of really cool areas of uh, light and shadow with the trees that have grown up in the last hundred years. So um, if you've been paying attention, a lot of the paintings I've been doing have been exploring this light and shadow kind of motif or, or process. So um, I know they may seem repetitive, but there's something about that that really stands out to me. And so I want to keep exploring this. I'm not sure how many of these will actually, or if any of them will make it into the, uh, into the show or the collection and show, but I really want to keep pushing this and, and just exploring what there is there for me and why I'm so drawn to it because I don't really know honestly I just really love the simplistic composition welcome welcome I see a few more people popping in so glad to have you on the stream we're just getting started this evening so it's good to uh oh I should have washed that off oh well Good to have you. Or I should have started with the white and then the dark colors. But that's all right. Live and learn, live and learn. Okay. I think we have basically all the colors we'll need on the palette, except maybe, can't really tell. Oh, there's some green. Maybe a little more green because there are some trees back there. And I have been working on another painting that is similar, but it's along the trail to uh, Spearfish Falls. Let me show you what I, I took this and I kind of altered it. So this is the painting I've been working on. Whoops, it's got a lot of glare on it. But similar lighting, but uh, it was a that was a daytime photo and I kind of altered it to suit my purposes. I emphasize the shadows and I really like that feeling of the or the feeling it evokes of kind of and this one I did alter a little bit on the left on the left corner. Those trees up in the left right hand corner were in full sunlight and so I extended the shadow across the path and up into the trees because I think then it kind of really guides your eye into the painting better than the unaltered reference photo. I also added some additional um, shadows on the, on the right hand side of the photo um, at the base of the foreground tree and then the branches up along the right hand side were in bright sunlight like the ones right in front of them but I kind of dulled them down so they don't draw your eye right up into the right hand corner of 
the painting. So you can kind of, and you may be able to tell, I don't know, depending on the size of your screen, those alterations, just because it's kind of basically Photoshopped, um, although I used a program called Procreate. So let's dive in. Let's start to draw in some of these um oh all my i did a i washed my brushes and i left a couple of them downstairs that's all right i need to go probably get some more brushes so let's actually let me put my um my medium this is just um some Gamsol and oil and I've mixed it at three different levels of viscosity increasingly uh, or the oil content increasing um, for three layers so the first layer we start with is the a blocking in layer where you put in the major forms and this is the most viscous, or is it the most runny? Isn't viscous thicker? So least viscous probably, um, but it does help thin the paint so that it dries a little faster. Um, so what we want to do first is, or what I want to do is begin to draw a little bit of, so we'll thin this way down and I want to put a little bit of I'm mixing I don't know if you can see that if you can see my full yeah I guess um, it's kind of in the shadows my maybe if I go like that and then I don't know if you can see clear down nope I guess not Oh, you might be able to see a little bit. So you can kind of see the colors and then I'm mixing here off your, almost off your screen. But, um, wonder if I can make this any, maybe. What I'm trying to do is make that a little bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Nope, it still doesn't. Only shows what the camera can show. So, all right. So anyway, it's just a little, it's just brown. So let's go in here and begin to draw in our, some of our um, landmarks. Um, let me, I should have put a graph. This will test my drawing skills. This is really dry um, paint, a, a very thin paint. So that is what's going on here. Would have helped if I had drawn some
if I had drawn some I'm adjusting all of this as I go, recognizing that my is all way off. But that's the advantage of doing this. So we can put kind of the dark. These are shadows. And here's where kind of the branches come. Kind of there. Kind of like that. Okay. Okay, this is telling me that our actual line then needs to be up here. And our shadows back in here so we'll adjust that a little bit that's why you just gotta put some stuff on the put something on the canvas then you can move it around a little bit. So we're probably more like this. Okay, now let's see where we put. Okay, so we come over. So we're going to keep, and all of this is pretty much shadow space, so let's put that. shadows that come right in there that are kind of distinctive one that falls Okay, we'll kind of see 
how good our drawing is then. And this is again just kind of an under drawing. Okay, so we want to put all of this has a, and we'll keep adjusting this as we go. Okay. That may not make sense to you, but I think it makes sense to me. So let me step back, take a look at this drawing for a second. So this is a little off, so that needs to come in. This is good, I can't wipe it off, so that means it's pretty dry. I think this needs to come up here higher. Then this. Okay, let me step back, look again. Okay, the goal is you want, we want this pretty dappled in here and we want a couple of significant spots right in here where the sun comes down here. Um, but most of this is gonna be shadow-ish. So notice that like 80% of the values are darker shadow values so that we have really the lightest value right here against this dark line, light value, dark value, that will draw our eye right there and that tree right in the center is kind of going to be our focal point. And so that's the composition or that's the composition. The things that help this are we have basically the path that leads us visually right there. This goes right here. Now there is a tree in the light right here, but because it's surrounded by shadow, it actually helps to draw our eye. Like, so your eye starts here because of the path. It bounces to this light spot here and then immediately bounces to the even more light spot out here. So, and then when your eye gets here, this shadow brings you back down into this, which brings you into this light, which brings you up to the light and back in. So your eye kind of goes and looks around all around the composition, but it ultimately keeps ending up back in this light spot and that's why this composition I think will be so strong so um, that's a little explanation of what's going on composition wise for this painting and why I think it could potentially work I think it'll work as a drawing you know as a sketch but I think it could really work as a nice painting um, because it has really strong composition and really cool things happening in the shadow. So speaking of shadow, let's actually go in and we'll start furthest away. Nope. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Let me put that down. Okay, I'm going to start furthest away 
and we're going to start with the sky. We're just going to block that in because probably once we block it in, we won't have to touch it, hopefully. Put just a tad of, maybe, oh, can't do the yellow, tad of blue. I put some green so that it looks more organic and we'll desaturate it really aggressively with this. And our medium is just to smooth out. We put, you want less than 20, no more than 20% medium. So this is all we mix. Then we want to welcome, welcome. I see several more people popping into the live stream. So glad to have you. You can feel free to comment or ask questions. You can do that in the comments wherever you're watching. Okay, so We'll bring our blue all the way up to the skyline. As we go further away from the horizon, our, our sky gets darker and more saturated, so We'll add just a little bit more blue, but we can always go back and add. Um, well, this is just the underpainting, so or the block in, so it's just a start. So, so, so that's what's going on now. As we come forward, I want to immediately jump into our switching my brush back to the larger brush and I want to mix a shadow color it's almost a a black with some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna or sorry burnt umber and we'll do a black color I think let me see Viridian, I think that's the hue. Viridian. I'm going to put a little bit of Viridian here. That is a very vibrant, almost a Christmas green, which I don't want to use too much, but it could be helpful. Mixing. So there's just a subtle hint of green in this dark. Color so we'll go in here. Thank you so much. That's Farida Faida. So glad you joined me. Thank you. All right, and we'll start laying in the darkest spots and building up our underpainting, as I said. These are, and these are just big, broad brush strokes to basically cover the canvas or the panel. Um, no detail at all, but this will help us um, will help us begin to lay in the shadow areas. 
and then we'll be able to match our our um, values so when we lay in the darkest then we can lay in the light in reference to that okay this is I want to begin to suggest suggest the uh, brush here, underbrush, and this is going to be a little bit darker. So we'll keep mixing the blue, the brown. And I'm just going to dab some of this to give the give the appearance of trees. Again, we want to take, is this a real trail you have walked nearby? Yes, this is the Homestake Railroad grade trail. Um, it's the old trail bed, old um, rail bed that went between Leed and Deadwood, I think in the 1930s. Don't quote me on it, but I think. And... Um, or it was decommissioned, I think, in the 30s or 40s. But uh, then they turned it into a hiking trail. This is different from the Mickelson Trail, which is the large, like, 200, 180-mile trail that winds through the Black Hills. The, the Homestake Grade Trail is only about a mile and a half to Deadwood, and so about a three-mile walk. It's a good little, it's a good little uh, hike. Again, we're just taking our, trying to keep our values in balance. But notice as I'm laying this in, pay attention to how quickly um, how quickly shapes start to emerge.
and the illusion of the illusion of uh, sunlight appears. And that's what I am learning is I want to figure out how to, well, I want to continue to explore how to design an image so that I can explain it like I did at the beginning. For those of you that were not here, I said I, I put some of this darker, um, this photo is altered a little bit. I added shadow on this side because these trees were all in the bright sunlight as was this cluster of foreground the big foreground branch that's kind of hanging in the front there and i dulled that down so that our eye is drawn into this contrast here of light values against the dark value um, and that should be our biggest contrast the lightest part and our darkest part and yeah, anywho, that's what's going on and why. And then I created some of these shadows here to be able to use the reference but not paint exactly the reference because I want, I want this to do a very specific thing and I want to guide the eye into a very specific... A very specific way so that's the deal that's what's going on and by continuing to just build this up little by little I can see where it's working and where it's not working Okay. And what will happen, as I explained, if you weren't here, is our eye is going to be drawn up to this one lone tree here that's in the sun and this patch of sun here, our eye is going to be drawn in because it kind of enters through the path. We know because there's a path that we want to look this way. But I could have structured it so the path is right in the middle. But by putting it off to the left a little bit, it draws our eye in. It makes it a little more interesting by stepping up this shadow on the side. It creates kind of basically a hole here. So our eye immediately is going to be drawn here, but when it gets here, it's going to be pushed back into the point because it's lined up here and there will be bright light here, which will cause our eye to hit there, go here, hit here, come back down here and go. And basically your eye just keeps going in circles to look at all the things that are happening in this painting. And that's why the composition is pretty strong um, because it pulls our eye in and makes us keep looking. And there's like this shadow, there's all kinds of interesting things happening because this shadow is going kind of across the plane of the of the path so you have a plane like this and then you have this and then you have another plane like this so it's almost like a triangle it's like a triangle here do you see that triangle and then there's a triangle there and there's kind of a triangle here and so you have all these really interesting 
kind of geometric components happening as well. Um, so yeah, anyway, a brief explanation of composition, at least what my brain is doing. There we go. Whoops. Okay. Well, there's a few more people that have popped in. Welcome. Glad to have you. Thanks for joining. I always wonder, like, man, what if nobody shows up? And then you all do week after week after week. It makes me so happy. Okay. We don't want too much happening down here. We want the eye drawn a, like away, not away, but we want Again, we won't have to do much more detail than this in the final painting by laying in this under undercoat and just giving some suggestion of interest. I mean, it's already looking like there's a bunch of shadows going on down there. So Okay. We'll put some more down here. I'm going to suggest, give the suggestion that there's a, there's kind of a, maybe a little bit of a incline there. Okay. I'm just scribbling across this a little bit so that it is definitely just giving some value to these things so that it looks like, I mean, it's clear where the sun comes, but these are definitely all right. Now, see what that does for us? It gives us all of this happening. Some real good lines there, but it also doesn't distract us from what's happening here. Okay, there we go. Now, I wonder. If that's gonna bring that too far forward, I don't think so.
Okay, now what I want to do is go in and take a little bit of this dark, we put a little green into it. And I want to take this up here and begin to put in, I'm going to lift this because I really want to be able to, I think I like where this, let me step back, take a look. Yeah, okay, so this line, I got carried away. Um, Now, I am going to put some of this hey Uncle Raul I do recognize the trail there are some beautiful views of lead that we, yes it's it's one of my favorite um, my favorite uh, trails just because of the uh, views of the head frames and then when you get down to Deadwood, there's some really beautiful views of, and some of the placards of the history of that area. So it's kind of cool. Okay, we want to put, and I'm moving this tree a little more into the center. Well, really off center, but over here because again your eye is going to do a circle and come right there and I'm simplifying a lot of this other undergrowth we'll just put some green in there um, because I don't I, I really like this tree being there and I want to emphasize that so That's what we're doing. And again, our eye will be drawn. So I mentioned the series that I want to do the of paintings. What I think I'm going to do with all these, I'm doing a bunch of these paintings and then I'll be able to take them and kind of, I mean, they're all smaller, but I'll take them and be able to lay them out and look at which ones really are cohesive, which go together, what do I want to include, and then I'll be able to choose the best ones, and then I will paint those as full-size paintings. So this is an eight by 10, but by doing this kind of thought process and basically painting it and thinking through a lot of the you know the challenges or the puzzle pieces putting the puzzle piece together really helps me to then if I decide to paint this one I'll be able to say okay actually let me go in and do this as a I don't know 16 by 20 or 11 by 17 or something and I can do it 
because I've already um, worked out some of the issues. Okay, I'm mixing a little bit more green into this. I don't want to brighten it too much because I don't want to, you can't, you can always lighten, but I want to I can bring you all up a little bit. I'm going to raise you up so that hopefully then it takes not really. I was hoping to take some of the glare off. Again, remember this bush or these this growth was in bright sunlight and I just desaturated some of that with my um, editing software. It's kind of nice because I can drop the actual picture in, crop it to the size I want and then I can play around with, you know, what doesn't work. And I can decide what my composition is going to be. So we'll put that in there. Then we'll come on this side. We'll do a little bit of form work on Again, because I just did this in Pro, or Procreate, I can kind of choose how I want to. Okay, now let me step back just a just a tad. Take a look. I think I've tilted this. Let me. There. That's a little bit better for y'all. Sorry. I'm adjusting. Uncle Raul, if you're still on here, you can see my little uh, Bob Ross over here in the corner. I got this shelf. I was telling you all, I got this shelf. My parents were getting rid of it and oh, there you can see all my acrylic paints and all my supplies in one place so it was really nice to be able to kind of reorganize the studio a little bit and now my table that was to the right I have free to lay paintings that are drying because oil takes longer than acrylic to dry so as I'm working on various paintings I can let them dry. Isn't that spiffy? So, all right, let's see. Let 
mixing a little yellow ochre in this color. By mixing these on the palette like this um, and using other colors as my base, then I um, you create a cohesive uh, you create a cohesive painting color wise okay now I want to take a little bit I think of this Viridian because this is a little more blue I have to be very careful because it's very I don't know if you can see that but it's very See how this green on this side is yellow and this is more blue? Um, it's very strong and it can easily look inorganic. So I want to uh, be careful where I use it. But I still, by using the blue, it will, like this, it will look like sunlight but it will be sunlight on the shadow side so it will look a little more it'll look closer to us or that's the goal at least I'm still learning how to do all this oil stuff because I'm used to painting kind of a a la prima or wet on wet style um, but that's not what I want to do long term so I'm used to painting one layer on top of another all in one setting but that's not how oils work so I am learning as I go That green there we go okay I'm let me see if this is too light oh that's about the same as what we had okay so I need to lighten this up bring up that orange in and let's see we want to put our most brightest values on this side and again this is where I have work to do um, because I've covered all this area but it's hard because I can't really go put highlights in now because there's dark already there so but I'm learning every little bit I'm learning to you know learning as I go and I am getting really I am getting much better it may not seem like it but I noticed little by little like it was with the acrylics like all of a sudden the more I mean I've been painting two or three times a week you know coming into the studio and doing these sketches and doing additional things and the more and I put in more layers and I do so yeah it really starts to you really start to figure it out okay that is going to be that for now because I don't want to overpaint it. All of this also, while I'm doing this, I'm thinking, okay, how do I 
create a painting that is interesting to look at and isn't too doesn't have too much detail you know doesn't um, especially in these early stages this first layer I'll do one more um, I'm probably combining stage one and two together a little bit I want to get eventually where I just do dark, 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 leave it and walk away and then come back and model in the larger spots and then do the final detail work, but I'm not quite there. So, and that may not make sense and that's okay. But now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take another brush and we'll do some of our lights. So I want to do a little bit of burnt umber and a white so that we get this really creamy kind of and then some yellow ochre this really creamy light color little medium let's mix that in where's the yellow ochre give me some more yellow ochre there it is okay we get this creamy creamy color I think I need even more yellow. I've used all my yellow. So, yellow. Let's see if this works. Okay, we want to come up in here. This is where, see I've painted this, I want to come in there and I'm going to have to do it in a different layer, paint over that green because I do want it to cut into this tree more. So, but again, every time I step up to the, every time I step up to the easel. I'm learning something. Every time. There. Now, that gives us, let's see if we can actually take, might be able to take, oh, look at that. We can take some of that tree right out of there. So we'll do that. There we go. Now, we'll bring it back, but this will allow us to kind of put that light layer in the way we want. We'll have to shape it how we want it. Okay, might have gone overboard because now it looks like that's just floating up in the air, but we can come back and add this tree in and see how much, I don't know how much of that I want, may cut some of that tree out, but anyway.
gives us an idea. Now we are going to put some of this detail There. Now, let's see if I can may not be able to because it's too too wet. But when I come back and do some of this detail work I can carve in more this start to get it. Starts to make sense. Where's my yellow ochre? Okay. I think we're almost getting to the stage of that we're done with the uh, block in. I just want to some of these.
Okay, now what we're missing is, oh, a bunch more people popped in. Y'all are just quiet, just quiet tonight, but I'm grateful you're there. Thank you so much for hanging with me. All right. I am getting more and more excited as I do more of these. And I mean, I was excited with the first ones I started doing, but as I get into some of these that are really, I start to see, oh, this could actually be a really compelling painting super exciting because it, I know that I'm not even I'm just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to like what I'm figuring out and if I'm already starting to create paintings that are like oh that's interesting because my goal is to get to the point where I create the painting that is like I want to figure out what are showstoppers, what makes a painting a showstopper, what makes somebody walk into a gallery, walk into a show and just gravitate like, you know, like I have to see this painting. What, what is it? And that's what I am, that's what I want to find out and figure out. The first thing I'm exploring though is this idea of light and shadow because I, if I can make light interesting I am convinced I can make people stop and pay attention. It's just one of the tools but I really want to become a master of it so that I can use it whenever I want and to what extent I really want. And so much of light and shadow is the value of what's around something. What is it? really fascinating to me. I think when it comes to showstoppers, there's something about creating drama, whether it's the subject matter or it is the, how it's the, oh, the uh, lighting of it, the, It's creating really compelling imagery that people, number one, want to stop and look at, number two, want to talk about, and ultimately, number three, want to buy. That's you know, what is it, in order for somebody to buy, they, they have to connect with the story of the piece, they have to connect with the, or the story that it's 
that it tells them? What is the story that they have about the piece? Um, what does it mean to them? Um, and then do they want to look at that, especially if they're putting it in their house? Do they want to look at it for years and years and years? Is there long-term sustainability? Adrian says that you will know when you have a real winner. You just can't stand the thought of putting it up for sale. She has several of those hanging in the walls of her studio. That's a great point, Bob. That's what I want to get to. I mean, there's a bunch of my paintings that I don't want to give up because they represent like some growth that I've had, but not a lot that are like, this is so masterful that I don't like, I shocked myself. I think one of the ones that, if I would say over the last three years, one of the ones that sticks out is that one, remember the one of the lion, Bob? Um, at the very beginning when I painted it coming out of the shadows and that was like a, I was like, oh my goodness, we tried something and it worked. And now I understand more about why it worked, but that's probably one I would, I d the thing is I don't really wanna hang a lion on my wall, but, um, and it got stolen, so there's that. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's all of those things, figuring that out and painting enough that you have the opportunity. Um, Stephen Pressfield says that the muse shows up if you do the work. He's a writer, um, but it's giving yourself enough chances that you will hit that idea or that you'll try that thing at the right time that clicks and that is your, becomes kind of what you're known for or what you, you know, what you want to create. And that's all I'm basically, I'm just creating work for myself. The, even this collection is let me do a collection of paintings, number one, to learn what I learn, but also let me create a project that gives me enough time in the studio that I can potentially have some serendipities happen. Like, can I, can I create something that is that gives me the chance to, you know, do something that is memorable or stands out? And number and more importantly, right now, is can I have fun? Because. Can I have fun doing it? Because ultimately, the chances of me hitting a jackpot right now are, I mean, not non-existent, but but I can hit a jackpot every day by what I learn. when I say, oh. And the jackpots I hit in these painting sessions are micro jackpots. So they're like these mini learnings that will, that I can take from painting to painting to painting. So they're doubly valuable because I just like, oh, especially like with learning painted oils it's like oh that works and oh you get to know oh that's dry enough it actually dried enough where I can lay something on top of it or oh that's not dry enough like right here I'm muddling around but 
ultimately I'll get it. And eventually I'm going to paint enough of, I love this light and shadow work and I have two or three other paintings that are similar, you know, paths with light and shadow and trees and, and I'm just going to keep doing it until I really figure it out and until it's just a, cause then I can transfer this to clouds and, um, I mean, there's just no end of the things you can put shadows on. See, I started to do that and it doesn't work because it's not dry enough. That's okay because we'll come back tomorrow, tomorrow, or the next day, or the next day, or the next day. So, yep, that's the deal. That's the deal, y'all. Just gonna keep playing until it all works out. Okay, let me step back again because I don't wanna overpaint. this dry and then I'll come back and do but I gotta kind of fix this because it looks a little wonky right now but there we go These might jump out too much, but I don't think so. There. Okay. There's these spots where the light just catches. And that gives us just the suggestion of some shape in these.
this is something again I'm trying putting a little red in there you get a little of this burnt sienna then you can start to play with the colors of the shadows and the rock the idea that there's some rocks in here again I don't want to get too crazy but you get the feeling that there's some variation over here there's some there are pine needles and such on the ground over there All you need is a suggestion of them because we're not spending a lot of time there. We don't want our eyes to get stuck over here, but we want interest. And you want people when they come up on the painting to be like, oh wow, that's that was like one or two brush strokes, but it looked like a whole nother it reads as something totally different. This is what I'm playing with now. Can I just create some idea of distance with that. I think it does by putting just some shadow under that tree. Definitely. And I've mixed my brushes now. I've made them both dark brushes. So I'll take another one. We'll come in here. We'll see if we can fill in some of that sky. Oop. Wipe it off. gives us some we can always paint sky holes afterwards but we'll start suggesting that right now whoops deal all right there we go that looks nice I think let me step back yeah 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 
I think the tree is receding into the background. I think when I come back and model this, I may create some shorter bushes in front of this tree so that it's not just like giant triangle Christmas tree right there because of all these, or I may pull these back a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, that's why these little sketches are so valuable because I'm doing all of this processing in real time, of course, but I'm thinking through all of these challenges in this painting in an eight by 10 size as opposed to a, you know, again, 11 by 17 or 16 by 20 or whatever. So, um, again, I'm coming now, seeing if I can do some of the I don't know that I can, but we'll try it and see if it works. Put some of these highlighted branches up in here. In order to make it work, because the paint is wet, you have to basically put down one or two strokes and then wipe off your brush and reapply the paint because you pick up so much of the dark undertone, or the dark, but you can begin to create some shape. be over painting this so I'll have to come back and do this another day yep 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 I think that's about it it's all wet and I think we're just gonna let it sit marinate it's good to after usually about an hour and a half two hours is my limit and I want to step away from something do some errands come back to it I think it can still work not quite as vibrant as I want it to be, but that's okay. I think it's getting there. I do love that super
super vibrant blue up at the top. Just really looks cool as it gets lighter down below. Gonna quit overpainting. But I think we're at a good spot, y'all. Good spot. So let me wrap up this stuff. I will, y'all can kind of, whoops, can see what I'm doing over here. So these are just odorless mineral spirits, but I don't want to. And I basically just paint my brushes. There's a little grate on the bottom of this, and I paint my brushes across them, across the grate, and that loosens the paint, and it falls through the grate. And then I wipe it off. See, there's no no paint comes off it's just wet it's crazy how easy and then then i take them downstairs and rinse them in water and coat them with dawn detergent which is oil repellent or you know takes grease out of dishes but it's basically removes any of the last and I let it sit. It also serves as a conditioner for the bristles. So I coat them and they sit overnight or until the next time I paint and then I rinse the detergent off. And yeah. A lot of painters, I guess maybe because I started with acrylic, but a lot of painters will let their brushes just sit in turpentine or mineral spirits, um, you know, and they just, and they rarely clean them. But so far, I have found this to work for me, so that's what I do. That's my process, and then I put this wonder what's going on. Put my lid back on my paints, which keeps them from drying out. And there's a little Velcro piece there, but I just take my shop towel, wipe the oil off, or wipe the paint as much as possible. And again, this palette is just a piece of, it's like a underside of a glass cutting board. And then I painted the top side gray. And then I can take some regular paper towel, which is less expensive, and some Windex. And that helps me really get the rest of this. See there's paint so I can just clean this off, make sure it gets all that excess color off, clean the oil up. That way it's squeaky clean for the next time I paint. slowly but surely developing a process that works for me. So that is it. Let me put this back on, connect it to its Velcro, and let me turn my And then, just if anybody cares, then I take my, oh, I already turned that off. I take my towels, because they have mineral spirit, which is flammable, I soak them in water. I mean, 
I wet them and set them on the edge of my kitchen sink overnight before I throw them away. Probably should just get a metal container for my a closed top container, a metal container for my studio. Then I could just put them all in there and then dispose of them periodically. But that's how I do it for now. Okay, so let me flip that camera back on and I will turn this one around so that I can say good night to you all. I want to say thank you once again for joining me. It is always a pleasure to have you in studio and let's do that. Okay, so whoops, there we are. Again, thanks for joining me. Here is where we are with the block in of this one. And then I will be able to take it over the next few days. Oops, I didn't get the whole bottom. I'll have to paint the bottom. But I'll be able to take this over the next week or so, do an additional layer and then some detail work. But again, working out these small sketches really helped me figure out this is another one. You can see a similar theme, the light through the trees. There's something about, to me, and this is just all my, and that's why I'm following it because it's my unique perspective. Whenever I'm hiking out, I am drawn to the light and shadow through the trees in the, in the forest. It just fascinates me, the light on the rock, the way the rocks look different. Um, here's another couple um well this was one of the first ones we did remember that the snow similar um that's now dry this was the very first one i did that was down by the uh spearfish falls so similar type thing um and then again this is along that homestake grade trail um so there's something with that that is fascinating to me and I just want to continue to explore it. And that's what this is all about. Oh, and there's the other one. Man, I did a bunch of them. But I don't think if I ever, I don't know if I ever showed you guys the, here's another one. I didn't realize I had painted so many. Remember this one? This is a summer scene. I really like this one. Um, this is along the Mickelson Trail. I think I will do that one as a larger painting. Um, these are some um, off camera. I don't do these for the live stream just because they are other people's work. But um, I'll show you. I've been doing some master copies. This is one. Um, this is a copy by an artist or a. Um, of a painting by an artist named Matt Smith. This one, I can't remember. I think this is Davidson, John Davidson, I think. Um, but it was a beautiful one as well um, and a lot of fun, challenging. But getting in the head of other artists and painting things that I wouldn't necessarily paint is a really valuable um, skill and so or experience and so I've been doing that as well so those are the things that are on my um, here's another one that I'm in the middle of just have a block in done but I'm doing those also along the way but I, I won't ever display those really publicly but that said I want to say again thank you for joining me it's been such a pleasure having you here in the studio we will be back next week Monday evening that will be April 1st for the 133rd episode of the live stream. I hope you can join me. It's every Monday night, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. I hope that you have a great week, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.